Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here today to talk about my journey transitioning uh, from hardware to software product management. This is mostly some of my learnings and observations. Um, I hope some of these learnings can be applied even if you are looking to move from software to hardware or change industries in other ways as well. Uh, but today I'm going to focus more on this, uh, on hardware to software transition, just because that has been my personal experience. Speaking of myself, um, I'm a product manager at a Thumbtack. Here I'm working on a new product uh, that's, that's designed to help homeowners better take care of their homes, specifically their home maintenance projects. Uh, prior to Thumbtack, I was a product lead at Square, uh, where I was focused on driving growth for uh, the Square website. Uh, before that, I've also worked at Intuit and at Infineon, which is a semiconductor company, uh, as hardware PM. Um, in my free time, I tend to read a lot about tech and tech strategy. Um, I have published articles about Internet of Things um, and designing systems around IoT in various electronics journals. Um, and I'm a tinker at heart. Like I mentioned, I, I love... Uh, programming home projects or reading about latest trends in technology uh, and writing about it as well. Um, lastly, I live in the Bay Area in California. Awesome. So today's conversation is going to be focused on mainly three kind of themes or ideas. Uh, first, I, I want to cover what the product development process looks like. Um, and then want to talk a little bit about what are the skills that you would need to succeed as a PM in, uh, whether that's in hardware or in software product management roles. Um, and lastly, I wanna spend time talking about making that transition, how I personally have made the transition, how I saw other people I, I knew make the transition from hardware to software. Um, but like I said earlier, it, this, a lot of the principles can apply even if you wanna transition from software to hardware um, to take advantage of the semiconductor boom that's going on right now. Um, so what I won't cover today, I, I need to call that out first. Uh, I will not be covering specifics of my role at any company that I worked at, whether it's Thumbtack or Square or Intuit. This is largely not applicable for uh, our conversation today, but it's also, um, I'm going to be sticking to more general terms around my observations in software, product management versus hardware. Um, I also won't be covering how to become a PM, how to excel as a PM, how to ace the PM interviews, any of those things. The Power School has a ton of resources around that that are that I would strongly recommend exploring if that is something that you're curious about. Um, but I will also not be covering interview tips and tricks. Um, the last thing is I don't intend to talk about the future of semiconductors, of fintech. That's something that I get questions about um, every once in a while, but I'm always happy to uh, talk about it um, offline, uh, but this presentation is more focused on um, hardware to software product management and contrasting them. So here's the the summary of our um, entire conversation. I, I want to give this mainly for two reasons. Uh, for folks who are kind of short on time, um, I want to give this takeaway, and for those who who can stay and um, and continue in, uh, during this, this call. Um, I, this is a good lens to have as you think through some of these uh, things that I will be talking about going forward. Um, but the, the key takeaway is that hardware is very similar to enterprise software, which is very different from consumer software. Uh, often when people think of hardware versus software, um, there are a lot of products that kind of lie in a spectrum. Um, and often it's... Um, Transitioning from pure semiconductor style hardware to enterprise software is um, a lot closer than it is moving from, say, semiconductors to consumer software. So that's one of the main reasons I want to call that out. Now I want to cover the product development process um, as a PM. Um, these are the different considerations that you would go through as a PM, and then I want to contrast them for what it looks like for hardware versus software. Um, so let's look at the product development process. I'm, I'm going to, I can um, 
compress it, maybe at the risk of oversimplifying it into kind of two phases. There is the understanding of customer empathy and understanding customer needs, um, and then measuring that uh, success, which is more of a consu- or customer facing side of the PM's job. And then there's the engineering development um, or product development itself, uh, which often involves, you know, designers, engineers, marketers, and um, various and data scientists um, who have partnered with me on this. But the reason I've picked engineering development is because engineering is such a critical portion of every PM's role. Um, and that's also one that has a high overlap between hardware and software. So that's why I picked the engineering development piece specifically. So on the customer empathy side, we want to understand uh, as PMs, who are the customers? How do PMs um, learn more about their different needs? How is success defined? How do we prioritize products? On the actual development side of it, um, how do the engineers structure their work? I'm going to cover a little bit about how do PMs partner with them? What are the key features of products that are released? And how involved are the PMs? So these are kind of the two lenses um, that I will be using to contrast hardware versus um, software product management. Um, so let's talk about the first one, customer empathy and metrics. Uh, within the um, hardware, again, I, I want to caveat this by saying a lot of this changes based on whether you're in a consumer hardware role versus a enterprise software role. You might not, a lot of this might not apply. I'm, I'm trying to draw more of an extreme here with like enterprise hardware versus consumer software to show the contrast here. Um, so in the case of hardware, you're dealing with maybe hundreds of customers, maybe thousands at the most. Um, these are often very high touch where you're directly interacting with your customers over email, calls, even visits uh, to their engineering facilities. Uh, in the hardware world, customers want specific features um, and capabilities because these are, again, in the hardware world, in most cases, you are selling, like I mentioned, the enterprise hardware, you're selling to other businesses. Uh, and so there is a very specific expectation on what the product should do in terms of the features and capabilities. As a PM, you are also expected to have a high level of technical understanding of the capabilities to understand how this works, what are the key trade-offs from an engineering standpoint that have led to this product uh, behaving the way it has. Not to say that's not the case for software, but it, in the hardware world, I've noticed it's, uh, the expectation of technical understanding is higher. Um, the metrics in hardware are focused more on functionality. You're looking at performance or yield. Um, you are also have you have a direct focus on your revenue. As a hardware PM, often you are focused on a revenue goal for your product. Um, to contrast that with software, uh, for consumer software especially, you have millions, maybe even billions of customers who would use your product. Uh, because of that, your interactions with these customers tend to be very low touch. You're mostly running, you know, A-B tests, maybe some user tests. Uh, you're conducting surveys in some cases. You might do some analytics to understand uh, or hypothesize customer behavior as opposed to like having them literally tell you what they want. Um, in the software world, customers want solutions and jobs to be done. They don't expect specific features. They just want their problem to be solved. Um, whereas, like you mentioned, in the hardware world, it is a little more prescriptive in terms of what this product should be doing. Um, PMs are expected to have a high level of intuition about customer problems and a high level of empathy of these are the key problems that customers are facing. And this is the most impactful feature we can build to address one or more of those problems. Um, Often the metrics in software product management focus on usage, adoption, um, engagement, retention. So it's a lot of like customer journey mapping focused metrics. Um, And the last point is there is an indirect focus on revenue, Um, especially larger companies. Product management is um, somewhat abstracted from a revenue goal. Usually uh, PMs are focused on metrics that they can directly impact around engagement or adoption or retention um, and less around like we need to make X million dollars from this feature in this year. Um, That's usually the case. Again, not always the case. I've been... Um, at companies and have interacted with com- uh, folks at companies where they do know what their revenue goals are. They might still be thinking about uh, metrics that are more tied to engagement or adoption of the product, 
but they do have a good level of awareness on how that ladders up to an actual dollar value. Um, so it, it's somewhat on the spectrum, but it's still a less direct focus than the hardware world where it's a very clear focus on revenue. Now talking about engineering development um, between hardware and software, uh, hardware has large products that often take months, maybe even years to actually release. And so because of that, you have a consolidated product release. You have large teams uh, with program management functions, um, often you know, dozens of engineers, maybe even more, uh, working on a single product. Um, and because of the high stakes here, where you, you cannot launch a hardware chip and then if it, uh, if it doesn't work as intended, it's not easy for you to release a quick fix. You need to essentially recall those chips in many cases, you know, back and then ship the new products to, uh, to your users who often might be, um, you know, selling to end users. Uh, so that there, because of that, there is a much higher organization oversight in terms of how the decisions are being made, are the best decisions being made. Um, even, and there is a push towards get it right as opposed to get it out quick. Um, again, I'm, I'm trying to compare. And so I'm drawing more of an, a stock contrast here. Uh, but that's, that's been, uh, my observation at different hardware companies as well. Um, and often post release, there is, um, uh, more production monitoring and sales support that happens as well that engineers are uh, very plugged into. Um, in the soft, in the software world, uh, things are a lot more um, fluid because you have uh, you can iterate on new releases. If you release something, you realize, oh, this is uh, not working as intended. You can ship a quick fix to that, or you can release the V2 of the product. Um, and often the software world works in weeks, right? You have sprint cycles, um, and the roadmap also tends to be more in quarters. You, you might have a vision for the team that maybe runs two or three years, but it's not a fleshed out roadmap. Unlike in hardware, where it is a very specific, like, this is what we're going to ship a year and two months from now. And that's what you're going to do immediately after that. So it's a very, uh, detailed roadmap that you have uh, in hardware versus in software, it tends to be more of a shorter time horizon because a lot of things could change as you release new features. You might find out that, oh, this is the direction that is engaging or not engaging with our users, and so we want to change accordingly. Um, there is less organizational oversight, not to say that PMs can do whatever they want in software. There are still a lot of release reviews, status updates. There still are design reviews in many companies. Um, but it's more to understand, are you best solving the user need as opposed to are you building the specific feature um, that we need? And often post-release uh, for a software PM involves usage monitoring, scaling, and also rolling out the features. Just give me a second. All right, now I want to talk a little bit about what skills you would need to succeed as a PM. Um, as I'm, I'm, as I keep mentioning, this is more of a, for the sake of illustration, I'm going to compare enterprise hardware with consumer software. Um, but there's a whole spectrum of where your product may lie that could impact what skills and how product development happens. So in hardware, you are playing the long game. It is, uh, hardware is a lot more like marathon, whereas software is more, you know, you're, you're building in sprints. Um, and so in hardware, your focus is, uh, or the skills that help you succeed involve nurturing customer relationships, uh, understanding the workings and the trends of the products, um, that are specifically tied to like engineering or technical capabilities. Um, you also want to prioritize perfection over speed. You, your ideal goal is to have zero bugs. And that is a very costly thing to have bugs in a hardware product. And so you want to be really intentional about how you, uh, build and how you prioritize the features and how you evaluate testing and things like that. In the software world, you can always scale with iterative wins. 
Um, and so the skills that make you succeed as a software PM are more focused on gathering insights, analyzing data, um, isolating and testing like the core hypothesis or the core solution, um, as opposed to kind of building a like, we need to solve 10 problems and this one product is going to solve those 10 problems. Often software PMs are focused on, let me solve this one problem first and then move to second and the third. Whereas in hardware, because of the longer release cycles, you're not, you have to prioritize solving multiple problems for your users. Um, often software companies and software PMs prioritize speed over perfection. Um, Facebook famously says, move fast and break things. And that is, uh, very similar to how a lot of consumer software companies operate, where they want to get things out quickly and, and test and learn um, as opposed to getting it right, but taking a lot longer to do so. Um, the things that are in common, of course, every PM needs to be good at understanding and translating the customer's needs into specific features or products. Uh, PMs need to be good at tying the product success to the key business metrics, uh, irrespective of whether that key business metric is a revenue goal or not. Um, you're also expected to excel at partnering with stakeholders. Um, and to build a long-term vision for the product. Partnering with stakeholders is uh, a key skill in product management, irrespective of whether you're in hardware or software, and being able to convince and evangelize uh, people internally about the benefits of your solution or your hypothesis and why it should be invested in. All of that remains the same, whether you're in hardware or software product management. Now I want to talk about making that switch. Um, this is something that's more focused on folks who are curious about if they are in a hardware role and want to transition to software product management or vice versa. Um, a lot of these ideas that I'm going to be talking about are from my observations and I've observed friends make those transitions as well. Um, so I want to share that this is a, um, more of my learnings as opposed to like, this is the best way to do so. You might notice that friends you know have uh, taken different approaches to make this switch. Um, and I'm happy to share a few that I've noticed. Uh, so the first one is working on transition products. Um, I've mentioned this many times at this point now that the products can lie on a spectrum of um, how complex it is or how, uh, you know, how enterprise it is versus more of a consumer product. Um, and so if you are in say enterprise hardware, which is probably one in the spectrum, a good way to transition towards software is if you work on products that are in the middle in terms of the skill and the process. So enterprise software has a lot of features in common with say consumer software. Um, and so, by the same time, it does have a lot of the processes in the mindset being very similar to a hardware company. Um, conversely, consumer hardware, very similar. You have hardware design and hardware product development, but it is a faster process. It is, it tends to be more, uh, short term focused. Um, and often consumer hardware has a software element in it, which means that you can kind of hone both those hardware and software skills. Um, speaking of the benefits, uh, there is a, a smooth learning curve because you potentially have a lot of skills in common and it's just about understanding what's changing. Um, they may, one thing I do want to call out is there may not be too many opportunities or products in the first place. So job searching could be a little more complicated, uh, if you're looking, if you're limiting your search to like transition products. Um, another thing I want to call out is there's very limited financial cost and less disruption to your lifestyle because you won't have to take a pay cut in most likelihood uh, moving from, you know, moving or transitioning between products. Um, you also are quite likely if you, if you leverage your existing skill set and ace your interviews to maybe even, you know, get a, get a compensation or salary bump. Um, but there is a risk of career pigeonholing that can often happen with some of these transition products just because of how rare they are. Um, you might not be able to um, transition back or in another direction all too easily. Just something to call out here. Um, the next one I want to talk about is stakeholder roles. Um, so you as a PM would work with various cost functional teams, 
that may be part of your core team or maybe outside, depending on your how your company is structured. Um, marketing, program management, biz dev, corporate strategy. These are some of these roles that um, I have personally known people transition to. And the reason that you do that is uh, a lot of these roles can be product agnostic. If you are doing program management for a hardware company, it may not be all that different in terms of uh, like learning a completely new set of skills. If you move to say a software company, there might be a lot that's in common. Same with marketing or business development as well. Um, and so the benefits of this is there is, uh, it's easier recruiting and onboarding. Something I would recommend personally is explore internal stakeholder roles before you explore external ones. Um, like talk to your, um, PMMs to see if there are roles where your, your skills as a PM might be a good fit. Uh, they're just for you to learn. And often companies have like six month, you know, rotation programs, uh, where uh, they allow someone to try out a new role for a short period of time. So that's something I would encourage exploring. Um, you may even find out that these, uh, product diagnostic or these, some of these stakeholder roles are actually more interesting for you, uh, and, and for your preferences than product management. Um, the other thing I want to call out is there might be, um, you know, there could be potential lifestyle disruptions, especially if you take roles like business development or marketing, where you might have more travel than you might do as a product manager. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, the other challenge that often comes with transitioning to a stakeholder role is often they require tenure and social capital. Like you need someone to be willing to take a risk on you being able to do the job. And this is especially the case if you are more senior, if you have 10 years of product management experience and you want to transition to, say, marketing, it's going to be uh, harder than if you do it, you know, a year or two after your, uh, you know, early in your career. Um, and so often you require um, a, a, man, a hiring manager or some senior leader to, to take a bet on you. Um, and often that also leads to the last challenge, which is on income limitations. Um, you might be transitioning to a role you may be at the top of the salary band and sometimes a promotion is not likely just because you don't have industry or role specific skills yet. Um, and so that might kind of limit your growth, uh, in the short term while you explore and learn this role, um, assuming you make the transition. Uh, the third one is a career pivot. This is something, this is probably the most common one I've seen a lot of people do. Um, largely because this doesn't require um, a lot of the, um, you know, the risk of, oh, if I get into marketing or if I get into program management or if I transition to a, um, a consumer hardware product from consumer, from enterprise hardware, I could get a pigeonholed into something. You have less of a risk. You have a lot more flexibility, which often leads to a higher likelihood of success. Uh, in being able to make that transition. It also gives you total career flexibility depending on whether you uh, get an MBA or an MS in product management or engineering, or if you join a consulting firm, you have a lot more flexibility to say, maybe I'm not interested in this. Maybe my interest is in a to work in a social nonprofit. And it gives you that opportunity to explore and um, find a role that makes the most sense for you. Um, often business schools, uh, like MBA programs or even masters in uh, pro product management engineering, um, especially if they're in good schools, often come with a, uh, a good income boost. Um, so if you feel kind of stuck in your career, especially if you're early on in your career, um, an MBA or an MS can, um, kind of bring you in at a higher level in a new industry. So it gives you a little bit of a boost there. Uh, one of the big challenges, I think the most obvious one uh, uh, that a lot of you are aware of is you're essentially going to take um, a year or two years out of work. So they could be um, the income loss as well as the cost of actually going through a program if you are not sponsored by your employer. Um, and there is a significant lifestyle disruption. You're transitioning from being a full-time employee to, you know, at a company to a, a student um, sometimes you might be even doing an employee plus student, like you might be doing a part-time MBA, for example. Um, and often that leads to a lifestyle disruption in, um, for a year or two years. 
or maybe even longer, um, depending on the program. Uh, and there's also a likelihood of having to relocate depending on whether you get a uh, business school or uh, a master's program at uh, the city where you live in. Um, one thing I do want to call out here, um, I've had folks reach out uh, in the past about whether it makes sense to do a part-time MBA uh, to do so, mainly because their employer is sponsoring them. Um, my thought on this is it depends on the terms of the sponsorship. If you are, if your goal is to transition out of your current role and if you're tied uh, to that employer for four years after you graduate, that might make it a little harder. Um, so consider that as you're evaluating this option, whether, um, the risk of, uh, being kind of stuck with your current job for financial reasons is, uh, going to be a problem. So there you have it. Um, coming back, uh, I want to again call out like a lot of hardware is pretty similar to enterprise software. You're building for a small number of users. You are solving, you're going very deep into understanding the technical aspects of the product. You are really going deep into understanding the user's needs and their specific needs as well. Um, and you're often taking longer to release products uh, in the enterprise software world. Um, just because often companies are not open to, you know, oh, new features coming out every two weeks uh, for their products. Um, and uh, for the products that the companies use, by, by the way, referring to enterprise software. Um, consumer software is very different, uh, but it's kind of like the other end of the spectrum. And uh, often there are ways to transition. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you could transition by working on products that are kind of in, in the spectrum somewhere in the middle. Uh, you could work on stakeholder roles or cross-functional roles, and you can also do a career kind of pivot um, and just go to um, school again. Um, so yes, so that's that's about my journey and my observations um, that I've seen folks uh, who have made the switch from hardware to software product management. Uh, feel free to connect with me. Uh, here's my LinkedIn. Um, I have just started using Substack. Um, haven't yet written much on that, but thought I'd share if, if it's, if someone's curious and you know, see my thoughts, uh, as I start writing about tech. All right. That is it. Thank you all. And, uh, looking forward to hearing any questions you might have and, um, connecting going forward.